I'm going straight on with a file. I've got a coarse file here that I'm using. Basically I'm finding the high ones, starting with those. point um, they're all the same distance sticking out that's why I can drag the file along but they're still they're still sticking out quite a bit from the fretboard So I got most of it down with the coarse file. I'm switching over to this finer file. It's like a medium, kind of like a medium grit. It doesn't cut quite as quickly. It's a little bit easier to control. sticking out quite a bit here. I can inspect the binding on the side to see if I've gone all the way down to it.
feel there's nothing cutting there. Just feel the difference. But you can hear the difference in the sound, there's a sort of gritty rasping sound and then when you get it flush with the binding um, it stops. You can hear the noise, look, nothing, a little bit of cutting here still, but hardly anything. And no sound of cutting there. So those are trued up 90 degrees. To the binding. I've been working in the garage and I built these blocks. This is so I can um, file the side of the neck which actually I did by hand and it's perfect really there's nothing that I can see that's wrong with it. You can see 90 degrees for that one and then 30 and 35 for that one. So worth making, it took me a couple of hours. So if I was using this block, let's say, with the file in to do the edge, I could start off with the coarse one and I could switch over to, say, the medium file in this block. Or even the fine one. So I wouldn't have to keep putting the files in and out for each process that I do. been working on these fret ends for a while. I've gone through a variety of different tools. Um, I found this one, as small as it is, um, it removes very easily uh, the ends. I have this tool here, which is a nice tool. It's been um, sort of hand, handmade by a guy called Chris Olsop. It has completely smoothed edges and a diamond face. And I've been using this one um, largely because I don't see the need to tape anything because this isn't going to do any damage. Um, what I do here is I, I start off by just running it sort of at 45 degree angle to the fret. So I'm just taking off the very bottom of the fret and then so keeping more or less the same angle just rolling it just a couple of strokes even doing the 
top slightly. Feel the difference between these and these, which are still very sharp, and these are no longer sharp. So it doesn't seem like it needs a lot. This is a supposedly a fret end dressing tool or possibly a crowning tool. It's rather large, um, so I found this a bit clumsy. I couldn't really get the control over this that I had hoped for. Um, this is very good, but it's not. It doesn't have a safety edge, so um, I'm just not using it at this point. I'm starting by just easing the very very bottom of the fret. Taking that away. Okay. Then I'm rolling over. smooth. So I'm not doing any damage to the binding because this isn't reaching it. I'm getting as low down as I can, then rounding over. getting to the top at that point, just doing the sides. Then I finish off with this tool. Again this has uh, edges that weren't cut into the wood. When I finished threading the neck, um, 
during the fretting process it was sitting on these stops and it was perfectly flat and it was fine after I finished fretting it and I came back this morning and it was lifting up it was probably a few, oh I don't know it was a few thousandths of an inch anyway but it was it was bowed as a result of putting the frets in ordinarily you can adjust the uh, truss rod there's the truss rod adjustment there but with this particular model, it only adjusts one way, and it basically adjusts backwards, um, giving the neck a bow as opposed to making it concaved, which is what I wanted to happen. This is uh, a one-way adjusting truss rod, which is what they put in these old guitars. Obviously, to counteract the string tension, there wasn't any need to adjust it the other way. In fact, there normally isn't, uh, unless you've come into this, unless you're doing this kind of work. So what I did, after much thinking, I came up with some picture wire. This is the sort of thing that you hang pictures on. It's very thin and it's lower than the frets themselves, so it won't be in the way. So I twisted it here and I used some solder and just soldered it. And I passed it through this little eyelet and I did the same thing. I twisted it back on itself put a little bit of solder with a soldering iron and then by turning this down into the wood I was able to bring the neck down back onto the stops and so I'm completely flat once again so if you have that trouble that may be a solution I'm about to do some fret leveling now what I've done so far is I've used the rocker the fret rocker I got this one off eBay wasn't terribly expensive um, and I've determined that there are some high spots so I've got one on this side, one on that side one there, there, there and there and there so there's a lot of frets there that have high spots um, it's one there and a couple there so I went ahead and uh, taped up the fretboard Okay, I'm going to do the first of a few strokes. On this flat beam I've got on one side 320 and on the other side I have 400. Those are the only grits that I have available at this time. So. Well, it makes quite an ominous sound. Some of the high spots, that one has been uh, touched, this one in the centre, these high spots have been sort of kissed a little bit, this one hasn't yet. So it seems to be picking up on the high spots, which is what you'd expect. doing what it's supposed to do. It's taken all the tops off the frets, except for this one here, still a bit high, just there, and it's missing it here a little bit. It's getting that one nicely. It's taken this one down. It's taken this one down on this side quite a bit. I can see the how it's flattening out. Interesting. I don't want to overdo it. Just work back here a little bit.
Okay, at this point I'm going to brush this off. I'm going to do the whole fretboard with black and then have another go. Right, I'm going to switch to the 400 grit very gently. See what happens. Interesting. Well, all of these are pretty much cleaned up. There's just a few back here. Let's keep going. Seem to be some low spots here on the edges. Most of the centre is opened up, it's just some low spots on the edges. Mostly at this end of the board. We've got clean lines all the way across up to here and then there's three in a row that are lower back here. There's a couple of low spots here and then a few back here but I'm going to sand in a little bit of a fall away here. So um, I'm not so concerned about this. I am concerned about this one here though being a bit low. Well, filing these frets has been a bit of a learning curve. I just want to show you what I've done. You can see the little green mark that runs down the center of each fret as I've reshaped them. I'm showing you through a magnifying glass at the moment, so that's what I'm using so I can keep an eye on what I'm doing. I found it difficult without the magnifier. So in the end I found this tool was probably the best tool for doing the edges. It doesn't cut too aggressively and it's a nice shape. The crowning file I found was taking the top off the frets. I don't think it's designed for this size fret. It fits over them too easily. It's probably designed for a larger fret, a wider fret. Um, so I stopped using that. The uh, big file I found it was too big, I couldn't get control over it and the edges here where they've been uh, ground down to make safe edges, I found them a problem. I couldn't get close enough to the bottom of the fret with that particular file so I used it for a little bit and I gave up on that one. So the winner in this competition was the file I had in the garage. This is the one that I used to file down the tangs on the frets after they've been snipped. Um, and I found this to be by far the best tool. It was small enough 
that I could manage it easily. I could see exactly what I was doing because it wasn't obscuring the work. It didn't have the safe edges, but I didn't find that a problem with the tape and just being careful. And I also used one of the uh, stainless steel fret guards that I have. So the combination of the fret guard, that thin file, and the magnifier, which is a must, I think, to really see what you're doing, um, is what made it for me. That That's what uh, enabled me to get all these frets the way they are at the moment. This fret here on the end has been polished to a high shine. Uh, maybe a bit difficult to see that because of the um, reflection of the tape, which is a bit worn. Um, but I went through a series of grits to do that and um, it, it, was, it came up pretty quick. It didn't take too long, probably five minutes or so, to run through the different grits. The way I'm doing is I'm running it, I'm running them all in the same direction. I'm not going this way and that way like some people have demonstrated. I find it better just to simply go the same way using a variety of grits. So we've got 800, 1000, 1200. These are the grips I'm using. Then I jump up to a 1500. You can see that there. A 2000. And a 2500. And as I said earlier, I'm sanding in the same direction all the way across the fret. I'm not going in two directions. I didn't really see the point in that. The 800, 1000, 1200 are readily available. The 1500, 2000 are difficult to find and I haven't seen a 2500 or 2500. So I went to a boot sale. I was able to find two full sheets of the 800. This is by a company called Cytac. It's Italian sandpaper. It's waterproof, wet and dry. Then there were three small sheets of 1500 and four sheets of the 2000 grit. You can see there, 2000. So the grits that are difficult to get hold of, I was lucky. So I should be alright for quite a while, I think, with all this sandpaper. I'm going to polish one fret so you can see how I do it. I have a couple of these uh, fret guards, which I may or may not use, depends on how it goes. I keep an eye on the uh, paper, and if I see that I'm starting to cut through it, then I'll use the guard. I'll start off with a small piece of 800. This time I folded the paper um, at the bottom. It enables me to get to a better piece of sandpaper, it's not so worn out. And I'll just roll in from the base of the file. over to the top. Try to avoid putting the sandpaper on the top, focusing more on keeping the edges rounded. For now I'm going on to the 1000. If I fold the bottom like this, I've actually got, it's a bit stiffer, I've got a bit more control with one hand. So, into 1200 now. Fifteen 
very thin on this paper. Two thousand grit. I'm rolling it over towards the top, trying to keep off the top as much as possible. I'm rolling up to it. Polish up is the 2500 grid, which just suddenly makes it shine, which is interesting. Makes it gleam. So I've now finished polishing all the frets. The last thing I'm going to do is I've got some 0000 steel wool, very very fine. I'm just going to rub the frets with it. I'm not sure it will make any difference above and beyond the 2500 sandpaper grit I used. But um, I think it is actually improving the shine just a little bit. Yes, it is. It's just buffing it slightly. Nice. So, that's the last step that I'm doing. I'm going to finish that all the way to the end of the neck. <laughs> 